What is the eccentricity of a vertex in a graph? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. We'll also introduce a couple of related terms. Let's jump straight to our definition. The eccentricity of a vertex V, denoted epsilon of V, is the maximum distance between V and any other vertex in the graph. So that's the maximum of the distance between V and U, taken over all vertices U in the vertex set of the graph. Remember that the distance between two vertices is the length of a shortest path that connects them. So let's see a quick example with this graph. How about the vertex A? What is the eccentricity of the vertex A? For a larger graph, you might want to write out a list of all the distances between A and every vertex in the graph, but for this smaller graph, we can do it pretty easily just talking through it. The distance between A and F is 1. The distance between A and B is also 1. The distance between A and E is 2. The distance between A and C is also 2. And the distance between A and D is 3. So the greatest distance between A and any other vertex in the graph, in this case, is 3. That was the distance between A and the vertex D. For another example, how about the vertex C? What is the eccentricity of C? Again, it's the greatest distance between the vertex and any other vertex vertex in the graph. That's the eccentricity of C. Well, the distance between C and all of its neighbors is 1. Those are E, B, and D. The distance between C and A is 2. The distance between C and F is also 2. So the greatest distance between C and any other vertex in the graph is 2, and thus that is the eccentricity of C. So that's it. The eccentricity of a vertex is the maximum distance between that vertex and any other vertex in the graph. But we have a couple special names for the minimum eccentricity in a graph and the maximum eccentricity. The minimum eccentricity of any vertex in a graph is called the radius of the graph and is denoted rad of the graph name. So again, that is the minimum eccentricity of the graph. So we can write that is the minimum eccentricity of V taken over all vertices V in the vertex set of the graph. So in this case, if we say that our graph here is called G, what is the radius of G? Well again, that's the minimum eccentricity of the graph. If you looked at all the individual eccentricities of these vertices, you'd find that they never get lower than two. And since at least one of them does have an eccentricity of two, the minimum eccentricity is two, and that is the radius of the graph. Similarly, the greatest eccentricity, the maximum eccentricity of any vertex in the graph is called the diameter of the graph. And this is a bit more of a common term. You might already be familiar with it. You can also think of it as the greatest distance between any two vertices in the graph. That's the diameter of the graph, which we can also define as the maximum eccentricity of V taken over all vertices V in the vertex set of the graph. So what is that for our graph G? Again, it's the maximum eccentricity. If you looked at all the eccentricities of these vertices, you'd find that they never exceed three. And since at least one of the vertices does have an eccentricity of three, the maximum eccentricity, and thus the diameter of the graph is three. And again, that's the greatest distance between any two vertices in the graph. One other thing you might be wondering is how does eccentricity work in disconnected graphs? Well, remember that the eccentricity of a vertex is based on the distances between that vertex and all other vertices in the graph. So if the graph is disconnected, how eccentricity is defined is going to depend on how we define the distance between disconnected vertices. If we say that the distance between disconnected vertices is undefined, then necessarily the eccentricity of any vertex in a disconnected graph will also be undefined. On the other hand, if we say that the distance between disconnected vertices is infinite, then the eccentricity of any vertex in a disconnected graph will also be infinite. 
Either way, it's not particularly interesting, but hopefully that gives you a little bit to think about with disconnected graphs, and you might find some other weird definitions in certain textbooks or papers, but those are the first two that come to mind that are most common. So I hope this video helped you understand what the eccentricity of a vertex is and some related terms. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.